Okay, welcome back. Time for five more DM quick tips. Now, these are the tips that I have learned running and playing games over the last 40 years. This is the 10th video of an ongoing series, and I'll go ahead and link the full playlist on in the description below. But let's get into it. Tip number one. Something I had never thought about until I had kids of my own was what it was actually like to play D&D with kids. Now, of course, I played when I was a kid, but I never played with kids. Now, my kids are all college age now, and they've moved on to 5th edition, but I started them on 2nd edition, actually. And I did want to make it a bit easier for them, though, because I started them when they were actually quite small, I think 4 and 5. So one thing I did is I customized the classes a little bit. For example, when my daughter was five, she played the trap finder instead of like a thief. Um, her job was just to find and disarm traps. She did a quick roll whenever she wanted. She said, I want to look for traps. Could be in the middle of the city street. Didn't matter. We rolled. We didn't find them. Maybe we did find one. And a quick roll of the dice, she would find all the traps in the area. Now, in the course, this helped keep her interested without overwhelming her choices. And then she could just sit back and kind of listen to the story and play along. The older kids, of course, had a more complete character sheets. Although I did still limit some of their things like spell options, you know, to what would be most useful for them. But, you know, from then, like any player, I turned them loose and just let them try stuff and see what happens. Tip number two. Something else that my kids did when they were little was have pets. Now, their characters had pets. Well, they had them too, but anyway, their characters had pets. Uh, and these pe pets would be cats, pigs, dogs, whatever. Um, they weren't used in combat. They weren't like, you know, war dogs or combat dogs, something like that. And they were pretty much a theme item. But, of course, sometimes they would tie into the story more directly. Like when the animals of the forest started changing. They eventually, they figured out a river had been contaminated by spilled potions. I think I got this from like a dungeon magazine or something. But, but the river had these spilled potions, and the animals were getting contaminated and changing. And when their own pets got affected, then they got really worried and really worked hard to uh, figure out the uh, possible cure and how to get those spilled potions out of the water. And they also had to go make some friends with some local druids. And then the local druids told them how to go get some ingredients, and then they put those ingredients together. And so... I guess the tip here is to, you know, they, they want to have pets, they want to have those kind of things, run with them. You know, as long as the story is interesting, as long as it keeps them engaged, that's really the most important thing there. So, what are some of your experiences when playing with children? How young have you actually played with? I know, like, at conventions sometimes you get a younger um, 9, 10-year-old come up. Have you ever played with anybody even younger than that, maybe? It is a very interesting experience, and it can definitely bring a fresh imagination to the, uh, to, to the game. Tip number three. Another thing I did, along the same line as the pets, is I had the party find a talking dagger. Now, this was really a way for me to offer suggestions without trying to tell them what to do. So I had the dagger be a little bit grumpy when it was pulled out, as if it really enjoyed napping in its nice, dark, and comfortable sheath. And it was always say, why is it so bright out here? You know, it, you know, it was just kind of a fun thing for the kids to make the, the, uh, the NPC, essentially, me uh, memorable. Uh, with this dagger, though, I was able to have a little bit of helpful advice or, you know, say, I wouldn't go that way if I were you, or, you know, the way I see it, you have this option or that option, you know, whatever was going on, it might have some advice, or it might just ask to be put back to sleep if I didn't want to, like, really give them any nudges. Um, so I used it not only to offer suggestions, though, but to relate history and stories, and I even introduced a couple of plot threads through the dagger. Yeah, you know, and actually, they eventually became so attached to the grumpy little dagger that um, I had a leprechaun steal the dagger, and they spent several gaming hours chasing the leprechaun, figuring out a way to catch it, and when they finally did catch it, all they wanted was their dagger back. Um, and then when they did get their dagger back, they lectured the leprechaun on being nice and then sent it on its little merry way. So, I guess a DM PC doesn't have to always be a PC, and sometimes it can be something silly and fun, like a dagger that's kind of grumpy. But anyway, tip number four. And this is an idea I wish I had thought of much sooner. But when playing the Wrath of a Shuttle on board game, I actually realized how handy it was to have cards for things like equipment, 
you know, and it kind of helped the kids remember what stuff they had and what they could do with it. We did go ahead and incorporate this into our game using note cards with pictures printed on them. And of course, the game stats were relevant too, but it was the pictures that really helped. Uh, this, so this, you know, it helped speed up gameplay because the kids could visually see what some of their options were and come up with a quick solution. You know, there's some adults I might suggest do this. I mean, myself. But, you know, we didn't go so far as to break everything down on the character sheet like this, although I suppose you could have a whole deck of cards be your character, but that seems a bit, uh, a bit much. But I did write up a few combat, um, recipes. And they were basically flowcharts for some of the characters. For example, a little bit more complicated character they haven't even played yet. Like, for example, if, uh, you know, if one of the kids hadn't played a gay cleric yet, they made a little flowchart where they could check it, if, you know, especially if they got stuck. So they checked, does anybody need healing? You know, what, what other thing can I be doing? My other spell option that I might have here? You know, be, you know and maybe I'll go and toe-to-toe -to -toe melee, you know, whatever it is that they wanted to do. But with those options written out of the flowchart, they could quickly kind of move through it. And of course, other was always an option for every step. I had that as an option for every step, because if they had an idea, I wanted them to run with it. But yeah, that takes us to tip number five. And that's that props are really important and useful with kids. You know, everything from, of course, from dungeon maps, but things like potion bottles can come in handy and they should be used. It kind of goes with those cards. They have a potion bottle sitting there. Hey, I have a potion of healing I can use. You know, if they find a key, hand them a key. You know, a really cool key would be like one of these old-time skeleton keys. You know, something like this guy right here. He's a fun one to hand out. Another, you know, key that I have to hand out. It's kind of like this. It's an old clock key, I think. But it's kind of a mysterious-looking key. You find that, and it's like, oh, what is that for? What goes in the end of it? Because there's a hole in the end of actually both ends of it. So you could have something going on where they have to find, they find this key. And then they also have to find out what goes in the, in the holes. Maybe there's something goes in these holes. So you, know, you can have a really fun little prop item like this. And it makes it memorable rather than just kind of describing it. Because they can pick it up at any time and look at the thing and go, you know, what is this? What is this big hole for? And maybe you hadn't even planned on, on using the big hole. But then you're like, hmm, what is the big hole for? Let's find out. So you can kind of play with that a little bit too. Or like I said, just a basic skeleton key. If you don't have keys like this, and I actually got these out of an old, uh, I don't even remember, just an old box of junk ones. But um, but if you don't have keys like that, just you know, throw, throw it on your house key, your car key, you know, whatever key you have, a spare old key that you don't use anymore. It doesn't really matter what the key is. It's just that it, uh, you know, you have a prop there that uh, you can use and it makes it more memorable. And, you know, you can get a lot of little items for like that that are like yard sales. They'll often have little like bins of junk. They're just, you know, maybe they're even just giving it away for free. They hope someone will take their junk drawer. And I think that might be where that, some of that stuff actually came from. And so they won't cost you much of anything, if anything at all. Um, and other things you can do is, you know, make like a theme snack. Like with the leprechaun one, um, just kind of hearkening back to that there. You know, the one that stole our talking dagger. I served Lucky Charms cereal as a snack to kind of start the uh, the process. And that really helps to set the tone for the leprechaun and set their expectations for the leprechaun. Because they were thinking the leprechaun, um, the Lucky Charms commercial, you know, it's not like an evil thing. It just wants their cereal or, in their case, their dagger. And again, it, it helped them to kind of know what to expect there. And I think we actually even cut the leprechaun out of the box eventually. Um, and of course, you know, you can use props like that as pictures. Uh, anytime that uh, the kids fought a monster, I had a printout of that monster, and I pinned it right to the back of the DM screen, right by their initiative markers. And that way they always had an idea of what their characters were facing, which can be really helpful when maybe they have never even heard of this thing before. And for the bonus tip, I just have to say that playing D&D with kids isn't all that hard. You just have to set your expectations to meet their abilities. And after all, this is basically a game of let's pretend, only we've added some formal rules and dice. A kid has the ability to, to play D&D if you set the expectations. You know, feel free to ignore rules that aren't helping. I mean, if it's not helping have fun, then just toss the rule. You can always reintroduce it later when maybe it makes more sense. You know, 
But, you know, and then maybe just have the kids, like, if they're super young, just roll dice and then just tell them what happened. I mean, it doesn't matter what they got, really. Or you can say, if you're trying to, you know, you can use it to maybe teach numbers or something, even if they're super little. And you can, as long as they read the number correctly, then, you know, whatever they wanted to have happen, happened. Um, of course, your, your own dice, you would want to roll those behind a screen because you might want to fudge them. And I highly, highly encourage, even if you don't normally fudge dice when playing with kids, fudge dice in the kids' fa favor just to keep making it fun. I know some people, they play checkers and they play checkers to win no matter what. And, and you know, that's fine. You can play checkers that way. But when you're playing Let's Pretend, maybe not quite so much. Doesn't mean it has to be, you know, all the... Uh, all of the uh, bump bumpers in, but uh, you can definitely gauge the game for your audience. Um, and, you know, you might not get long sessions, or your kids might surprise you and stick with it for hours, but don't force it. Let them come and go as they want, and over time, they might stick with it more and more. And, you know, in my own experience, no, not all of my kids still play. Occasionally, I can get some of them to dust off their dice, though. So, anyway, thanks for taking a look. What quick tips would you add? And please let me know down in the comments below. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.